second edition of our collaboration on YouTube between FilterCopy and NeatPrep.com. I have with me Kapil Gupta, the man who knows everything about Neat. Kapil, uh, when we look at Neat 2021, it's also very important to look at Neat 2020 and what really happened. Of course, apart from the entire drama over postponement more than once and how the students were feeling very tense about it, we also saw a very high cutoff. What are the lessons that we can possibly learn from what happened in 2020 now in 2021? Uh, Sudhir, uh, uh, if you would ask my personal opinion, uh, these high cutoffs, uh, if the government uh, or NTA decided to set a very easy paper because students were already in significant stress, uh, the stress just got postponed. Uh, a student would have come out very happy out of the examination center and he would have uh, been shocked once predictions start com uh, started coming in uh, by the end of the day. And when results came out, uh, those students who would have been very happy that I I'm going to score 600, they would have figured out that they are not going to get a government college. These are, in my mind, uh, this, this thing is not done. This is absolutely unfair to the student. There are students at 700 marks. Imagine at 700 marks out of 720, at the same mark, there are 25 students. So one student got Molana Azad at 700. Another student got Vardhwan Bhavir at uh, 700. Absolutely unheard of. A cutoff in a competitive exam of 86%. You can imagine uh, that is a tough place to be in. One wrong question is going to make you take an admission in a private medical college versus a government medical college. That is... Uh, that is on tenter hooks. I uh, I do not agree with it, but I don't know uh, what is going to happen this year. So last year, I mean, twenty twenty was obviously a much easier paper. What is the expected level of the paper question paper this year? I mean, how are you preparing your students uh, for twenty twenty one? What can possibly they can what can they possibly expect? There is an unknown there, uh, Sudhir. Uh, if the paper happens twice. And if the paper is like last year, the cutoff is going to jump even more because uh, what it does is the bad performance are further culled out. And a, a, six, a 614 cutoff was bad enough. A 640 cutoff is going to be an absolute travesty of an exam. Might as well take admission on board exam results. Why to conduct an exam and expose people to the health risks uh, this year, right? So uh, if the exam is conducted twice, my expectation is paper is going to be tougher. If it is conducted, uh, only once to give you a perspective in 2019 cutoff was 583 in 2020 cutoff jumped to 614 and in 2018 the cutoff was 539 so 539 585 614 right so my expectation is if it happens twice the paper is going to be tougher closer to 2019 or somewhere between 18 and 19 level if it happens once it might be again very close to what it was in 2020 so what should really be the approach? I mean, this intrigues me. Now, for students who are not able to crack it in 2020 because of the reasons that you just mentioned, what should their mental approach towards 2021? Because they've already taken a drop year and they are actually have taken a risk in that sense. So what should their mental approach be when it comes to 2021? Because 2021 also, students have not seen the inside of a classroom. Exactly. So the situation in that sense is even more difficult than the batch of 2020. Correct. So... In case a similar kind of an easy paper comes in 2021, what would the batch of 2020 do, the droppers? So uh, uh, one thing which I would say, uh, if your question is specifically with respect to how to ready yourself for an easy paper, because the cutoff is going to be very high. Mm -hmm. So first thing is you absolutely have to make sure that you are covering all the 96 chapters. Uh, this requires understanding not to a lot of depth of all the chapters, but you should know all the chapters because you can't afford to leave any question. Second thing is when you are attempting your mock test, you should uh, build up the speed so that you are able to finish 180 questions in 180 minutes. Should not happen that you ended up leaving 10 questions because you could not uh, get to a 180th question. And finally, uh, preparing for an easy exam is generally very difficult because uh, easy might also mean that uh, you just don't uh, focus at all on uh, building your concepts. And uh, it might very well happen that the paper was slightly tougher, questions, language was slightly trickier, and uh, you got stumped again. So I would not prepare considering 2020 paper. 
I would prepare more on the uh, lines of 2019 paper where cutoff was uh, 582. So these okay. are the three things uh, I would you, say. Yeah, you you mentioned specifically about you mentioned specifically about time management, Kapil. Now, of course, there are students who got 720 on 720, also 700 out of 720. So it means there there are students who are managing to attempt all the questions. Correct. But on an average, on an average. i mean do a lot of students miss out on answering all the questions or even reaching to the 180th question you would miss out if you have not done enough mock test practice uh, before the exam we generally recommend that at least 20 mock tests you should write in a typed fashion and assume that you are actually sitting in an examination center and writing it because the problem that happens is uh, there is a lot of pressure when you are uh, writing the actual exam you have just stand Stood outside for one and a half hours before you could get into the center, and it is a matter of stamina as well. You have to be absolutely focused for three hours. So practice is important. Once you practice, it is actually not difficult because examiners are also setting, knowing fully well that the student has only three hours, and he should have a fair chance on reaching one eightieth question. But if you don't think through uh, whether you are going to do biology first or physics first or chemistry first, how much time you will give to ninety questions of biology? then you would do chemistry how much time for chemistry how much time for physics whether you are going to go back to the questions again or you are going to do only in one run all these thing need to be practiced before you go into the exam and then you definitely can reach the 180th question the big question couple is ncert good enough to crack it neat i mean again going by the 2020 experience is ncert good enough uh if i have the luxury of answering it uh, in a slightly lengthy fashion sudhir uh, i want to ask you hmm. uh is it is it uh, good enough to read uh, read geeta to understand what is there in life is it good enough to to read uh, the bhagavad gita to understand what is there in life everything is written there obviously not <laughs> obviously not yes so uh, the problem that happens is every time there is a gita part at home we call up a priest and he would do the explanation of what is uh, written in gita despite the fact that gita says consistently focus on your hard work don't worry about results that is what we end up doing for our yes. 50 60 70 years of life similarly in ncrt that's right the framework yes. nt has very clearly communicated committed in last four papers that they have conducted in 2019 and 20 paper is going to be from ncrt but the challenge is NCERT is the best written book most of the student do not understand what it is trying to communicate and then they struggle when the question is built around the concept of NCERT that is why physical coaching centers or online okay. coachings or online programs exist because before reading NCERT if someone can explain uh, uh, that concept to you then you would be able to understand but whatever is in NCERT in bio in physics in chemistry nothing is going to be from outside but the challenge is student by itself uh, by himself or herself is not able to understand in a lot of places what ncert is trying to communicate they cram there and then they get stumped in the exam hmm. okay now uh, kapil another problem that many students face is that they fear physics when it comes to the neat syllabus sure. and in the bargain they focus more on physics and end up ignoring biology which is really the staple diet as far as neat is concerned right. now how right. do you Uh, tell students not to fall into this kind of a trap i would strongly say uh, uh, play to your strengths so uh, strength is you have to hit 320 330 in biology to have a chance to reach 600 615 you remove that uh, you uh, you bring it down to 250 marks mm -hmm. out of physics and chemistry uh, 250 to 615 journey is there right so that should give you an idea that without biology uh, without 320 marks in biology there is no path to a 615 cut off the second thing that needs to happen after that is most of the students struggle with physics it is not only you who is struggling everyone is struggling because you do not have a a, a good grounding in uh, mathematical concepts which are going to be applied in physics you are generally a little bit less comfortable with calculations that is yes. why in the first place you chose biology and now uh, you are figuring out that uh, you know what you mm. can't really run away from calculation so what i would do is i would have a lot of focus in biology i would have a lot of focus in organic and inorganic chemistry which is another 30 questions so these are 120 out of 180 questions physical chemistry and physics which is 60 questions involve calculation do a lot of pick and choose uh, these are uh, around 39 chapters figure out whether you are very comfortable with 25 chapters be uh, become very good in them 
and just try and figure out what to do in the remaining 14 chapters but don't assume it to be a monolith of physical chemistry and physics try and figure out your sweet spots there try and become very strong in the sweet spots and try and manage somehow in the areas where you find extremely difficult and typically students struggle with seven eight chapters which are there in physics and physical chemistry just try and uh, apply a lot of formulas there and uh, try and figure out if you can uh, fix it great very important tips there and i'm sure the students listening to this will find them useful uh, thank you very much but don't miss part 3 of our uh, conversation where we will speak specifically about what to do in the last mile the last 4 to 5 to 6 months of your preparation and how you should actually prepare in order to ensure that you are able to crack neat so don't miss stay tuned thank you very much for watching